Welcome to Watch Treading with Tire Review, presented by Apex 2021. I'm Maddie Weiner, and today on the podcast, I'm joined by Steve Ferrante, the CEO of Sail Away LLC and the producer and host of Pinnacle Performance Training, a program that teaches independent tire and auto service businesses how to improve customer relations, build, build winning team cultures, and produce greater sales results. Steve has more than 30 years of successful sales and management training experience. In addition to being a regular contributor to Tire Review, Steve grew up in and around his family's auto service business in Massachusetts and is an avid auto enthusiast. Steve, welcome to the show. Hey, good morning, Maddie. Thanks for having me. Thank you. So I, I want to discuss the sales process um, you train your shops on through uh, Pinnacle for Performance Training. But first, I do have to ask, you know, tell me about growing up in the industry. Well, my dad was the R of RNA Automotive in East Boston, and uh, it actually started in 1966, so before I was born. And they would take me down there as a, a little kid for the most part. And, you know, it wouldn't be fair to say I kind of worked in the business because I was a little too young. So I did all the grunt work, uh, you know, sweeping the floors and all that stuff, and then helping out, helping out, you know, cleaning the shop. When I was old enough to drive, uh, you know, they would make me the gopher and I would go for parts and whatnot. And of course, you know, I'm a huge car guy uh, still today because of that, you know, background. That's awesome. Do you have a certain uh, vehicle that you're super proud of or anything like that? Or Well, you know, even growing up in the business, I was never, you know, I, I say I was the son of a mechanic, but I, yeah. you know, I wasn't a good mechanic even then or, or now. My interest was always high performance. So anything high performance, you know, I was all about that. I was all about the toys. And even back then, if someone came in, and, you know, they, their car wasn't working right. They needed a carburetor, you know, boring. But if they came in and they needed, uh, you know, a Holly double pumper or, you know, they wanted to do some upgrades, you know, that's that's where my passion was. And, yeah, I've got several toys uh, that I'm proud of. You know, I've had a, um, well, I've got a C5 Corvette, uh, some custom upgrades Ooh. to that. That's a fun car. But mm -hmm. I got a 68 Camaro at, uh, RS that I got on TV at the Meekum auction in Harrisburg. My biggest pride and joy though, although that's a show car, uh, my biggest pride and joy is a 79 Trans Am that I've had since 1985. Oh, wow. And so it's, cool. it's a time capsule car. It still looks just the way it did way back in the day. It's, you know, it's kind of a custom car, all black, you know, kind of a pro touring light car. It's um, all about high performance. Well, so getting into Pinnacle Performance Training, can you just briefly, for those that don't know, describe the process, um, you know, of the program? Well, Pinnacle Performance Training is just like it sounds. It's about being the best. So a lot of folks come to me if they are familiar with the uh, tire industry or auto service industry training, and they'll think, uh, you know, we've had training or we went to, you know, some academy or we went and they're thinking it's maybe, you know, the five steps to a tire sale. And I've got a lot of uh, quote unquote old timers who have been through a lot of training. They're reluctant. And then they have me in and go, whoa, this is totally different than I thought it was going to be because pinnacle performance is really about being the best. So I've got a quote that's right on my website. It's the first thing you see. It says this 80 percent of businesses and the people in them are not in the top 20 percent. Now, it's mathematically impossible. This is a program about that top 20%. You know, what are they doing? Why are they doing it? And how do you apply that to your business? And uh, that's something I've been studying now for over 20 years, which is, you know, who are the high achievers? Who are the market leaders? What are they doing? Why are they doing it? And how do we apply that to your business? I like to always tell people on uh, no theories. So success mm -hmm. has a formula. There's a similar process that all world-class companies have taken. So when I train companies like, you know, Zappos or Apple or Lexus. These are companies that folks recognize. Well, in many cases, they didn't even design their own customer experience sales models. They've taken it from other companies, adapted them and perfected that model for their business. So it's the same thing. And having grown up in the industry and being a huge car guy, you know, no one goes through training and says, well, you know, conceptually that makes sense, but you don't understand our business. All of my clients are market leading, you know, multi-location. Uh, tire and auto service business. We know this makes sense, but in a nutshell, Maddie, it's really about being the best and applying that the, that formula uh, to your business. And mm -hmm. it's um, I could go wide angle with you. It's it's about the customer experience, 
But yeah. if we go this way, uh, you know, micro, it's really mm -hmm. about the individual. And I have found this, uh, when your people are better, uh, you're better. And when they're average, you're average. And when they stink, you stink. So <laughs> this is really a program that works on them. Great companies have these consistencies and they have something called, you know, BHAG. And I say that again? Afraid. It's called a BHAG. It's an acronym and it okay. stands for a big, hairy, audacious goal. And right. clinical performance for my you know, top shop clients, it's become that goal, something that we can rally around, a mission, a cause. So when I come in, I say, well, listen, the goal isn't to be the best in your market. In many cases, my clients that hire me are already the best in their market. It's really about being the best, period, the mm -hmm. best in all of North America. So that sounds great. But top shops, these truly best companies, they do certain things a certain way. They sound, act, and feel a certain way to their customers. So what's that formula? How do we do, how do we apply that? Yeah, I did want to ask you too. I mean, like you said, you've, you've coached many of Tire Review's top shops in, in sales in particular, and um, just kind of focusing on the sales process. What, what from your experience, um, do you think makes a successful sales process at a tire dealership? Well, I could tell you what doesn't make a successful sales process to answer that question. Is, okay. You know, as I pinball around North America and I'm literally all, all over the country, every two weeks I'm somewhere working with somebody is I always, I'll call it establish a baseline with them by, you know, listening to their sales calls coming into their store, you know, uh, via the software we use. And we'll talk about that, Maddie, uh, recording their calls. And I want to know, well, what are they doing? you know, before I come in and train them anyway. Mm -hmm. And what I typically find, and some of these are very sophisticated big companies, is the lack of a sales process is really called winging it. And what happens is one person might be pretty good, but, you know, that guy, Joe, Joe's doing it Joe's way. And the next person that answers the call or has a customer come into the store, he's doing it his way. And there's no consistency. And the lack of consistency kills consumer trust, meaning the customer cannot trust now. You know, I, if I get Joe, it's good, but if I call another store or get somebody else, it's a little different and the customer can't trust it. So the first thing when it comes to a sales process is first of all, you have to have a model. You have to have a true sales process. And, and one of the things I say is if you're not in control, you're out of control. So we'll have people that come into the store call on the phone and we're, we're simply not managing any of that. We're kind of winging it. The caller's asking the questions, we're answering the questions. So you have to have that sales model, but you know, what is it based on? We spend an awful lot of time in my training talking about the why, the psychology. Mm -hmm. And one of the things you'll hear from me, if you want to know how to sell more, you better know why people buy. Meaning don't focus your sales process on selling. Because what we end up happening is people are focusing on the transactional part, what we call in training, the functional part. And here's what it mm. sounds like. Somebody calls and says, hey, Steve, I'm calling for price and tires. The first thing out of the rep's uh, face is, sure, what's your tire size? Right, yeah. What's your tire size? And then they go, what kind of vehicle is it? Is it an SC or an LE? Because I'm showing a 17, 18 inch here. Do you happen to know what size it is? And then they go, okay, is there something particular you're looking for? That is there something particular you're looking for is the default question to folks that really don't have a sales process. Mm -hmm. They don't know what to say. Now, imagine this, Maddie, you go to the doctors and you walk in and say, doc, I don't feel well. And the doctor goes, well, do you have a medicine in mind? <laughs> Doesn't work. <laughs> that would never yeah. happen. But right. it happens all over the country, all the time to folks that don't have a sales process. So we work on something. Um, it's really a human thing. So there's a, there's a, a term for it. It's called emotional intelligence. Right. And if you oh, sat yeah. in my train, you'd go, you know, this is really about mastering human relations. This is really about emotional intelligence. This mm -hmm. is really about people skills. Now, if you ask anybody, you say, well, people buy from people, right? They all go, absolutely. They go, great. Listen to these calls. Where's the people part? Where's the people part? You talk right. about their tire size and their vehicle and you try to get them into the store. Where's the people part? I go, do you, would you agree that the person on the phone has been either been here before or they haven't? And people go, Yes, that makes sense. I go, great. Which one was this? The sales process, a lot of time, Maddie, it misses that people part. And we call that the emotional part, emotional engagement and training. 
Got it. Okay. Yeah, for sure. I mean, mo emotional intelligence has been a huge topic in recent years, just in, in corporate culture in general and, and business. So yeah, absolutely. yeah, that's great. Now it, it, I'm curious, you said, you know, finding that why, why people buy, um, can you share maybe some, some of the things that you have found over the years of why people buy? Well, yeah, it, it, we all know that people buy from people they like. Now, here's here's right. the thing. If we don't, what we don't have in this industry is something that we don't take advantage of as far as I'm concerned. We, when we have our tires, you know, the, the big ones, of course, you know, Bridgestone, Michelin, Goodyear, but it doesn't matter. We don't make our tires. So here's the thing. Somebody can't call and we go, well, good news. You know, our Michelin tire, our Goodyear tire, our Bridgestone tire, it's better than theirs because our manufacturing facility... We don't have that. So it's not the products. And in the mind of the customer, if we do auto service as well, in the mind of the customer, any shop that has certified technicians can take care of my vehicle. Mm -hmm. So it's all about the experience. It is all about, and most people think that experience means they buy from us, everything that happens after that. That's actually half of it. The more important half is what happens when they're shopping. And if we sound, if it feels, if we act, like the two, three other shops that they call, it just defaults to price. Now, that's also a pinnacle principle. In the absence of emotional engagement, it's all about price. So when mm -hmm. services or products are the same or similar, and in our industry, they're identical, and prices are the same or similar, and in our industry, they're always within the same ballpark, Right. emotional engagement always wins. So you know, you talk about that, you know, why do people, what have I found? Well, I found you got to put the people in the people business you're in. There's a very specific way that you do that. And if you look at a process, there's actually a syntax to it, an order in sequence of how things should happen. In the very beginning of the call, as an example, the right. call in psychology is in this thing called a buying trance, where all they're trying to find out is, can, you know, can you guys do this? And if so, when and how much? They're in a buying trance. A buying they have trance. an agenda. They have okay. an agenda. And if you're really good at, if you're not good at this, you just cater to that agenda. Now, let me right. place this together. Let me show you, tell you some options. Let me tell you what's an inventory. It's a very predictable thing that none of what I'm saying is theory. We've evaluated over 90,000 sales calls and we use very sophisticated software. And I can tell you that when we're back at 10,000 sales calls, we mm -hmm. started to spot the trends. This was years ago. But now in the last several years, we fine tuned it to the point that we know exactly what works. And what I wanna be careful, you know, expressing all this is it's really not about sales. It's about customers. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us can get sales by giving a low price or, you know, uh, relying on a low price guarantee or maybe uh, coupons or buy three, get one free. And then we get sales, but we don't get customers. And building customers. So I've got clients that come back to me and say, Steve, something you said day one, which is something I tell all clients day one, I'm not here for sales. We actually have what's called a sales through service model. I want sales too. I want mm -hmm. all the base full and I want tire units to get up. But the way I want to do it is I want to build loyalty with customers. I want folks who not only buy from us today, but they come back. Better than that, I want folks that buy from us today and bring their friends and family. For so sure. I have the clients that tell me, some, Steve, something you said day one has actually happened. We've got more and better reviews than we've ever had before. And when you can do that and you've built customer loyalty, now all of a sudden you don't have to work as hard. So I have multiple clients who dramatically reduced their traditional advertising, TV, radio, newspapers, all that stuff they were doing to try to get new customers into the store. Yeah. And they've achieved record profitability in sales because now they're investing into, well, of course, training, but they're investing into the customer experience. So when I go in there, I train like companies like the Disney experience, taking those same Disney principles and applying them to what you're doing. Uh, you know, Disney, it's all about the emotional connection people have for that brand, how they right. feel. But if you look at Disney as an example, there's a lot of low lights. You're standing in line, there's big crowds. People remember the emotional stuff. They remember the highlights. So how do you do that? And how do you do it in a way that snaps people out of that buying trance of, you know, what do you guys have and how much is it? And I right. want my life. How do you do that? How do you slow them down? So I, I know, you know, we're kind of switching into a new year. Um, we're filming this in November, but December is right around the corner. January is coming up fast. Um, so and, uh, dealers, you know, might be uh, wanting to set sales goals 
um, with some KPIs in mind. So, so I'm curious from your perspective, what's your advice for how they can set and, and then measure these goals, you know, their sales goals throughout the year? What do you recommend? The single most impactful thing we do gets back to those performance indicators, meaning you've really got to look at where the revenue comes from. Where the revenue comes from for any tire shop is at the point of sale. So what are our folks doing at the point of sale? Now, when somebody walks into the store, I could do a whole class for you on why that's important, but why it's far less important than the phone. Because somebody obviously in the store has made a much higher level of commitment. They drove over there, they walked in, they probably have their pants on. Someone on the phone could be just sitting in their underwear, pulling up a Google search, trying to get some prices. The level of engagement is totally different. So mm -hmm. you have to have something there that works a sales process, but then more importantly, Harvard Business School 101, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. And this is the single most impactful thing we do is all of my clients, we screen their sales calls, actual customer calls coming into the store. These are not you know, mystery shoppers or folks that work for me, mm -hmm. actual customer calls. And then we evaluate those calls based on the pinnacle sales process, which is about two dozen areas. So mm -hmm. we're able to break down that and say, here's how you're actually performing. Here's how you're doing in every what we call compartment of the sales process. So I can come back to you and say, hey, Maddie, here's how you're doing on that particular call. Here's some things you missed. Here's where you zigged and you should have zagged. Here's where you missed a call to action to get the business at you know four minutes and 12 seconds. So individualized. Right. And then yeah. I can say, here's how Maddie's doing. Here's how Maddie's store is doing, all the team members. Mm -hmm. Here's how the entire business is doing. And, you know, some of my clients have over 30 locations. So here's right. how we're doing, you know, wide angle. If you can't measure, you can't manage it. So I'm going to give you a, a, a statistic. If you're not tracking this right now as a tire shop, start tracking it in 2022. How many of your first time customers, they've never been with you before, come back within 12 months. Now, what we do is we take all the guesswork out of this by literally evaluating those sales calls. There's no theories here. So when I go back, for instance, I'm going back to a client next week, Maddie, you and I talked about them. I've been working with them since 2012. Mm -hmm. uh, I can even tell you who they are, Virginia Tire and I love them to death. Fantastic, top shop caliber company. They right. are friends in like family to me. And we evaluate all their sales calls. Now, when I go back next week, I will not be guessing. I'll be able to show them, here's exactly how you're doing. And this, of course, there's folks in a different, um, you know, you might be newer and, and novice to this and try, you're, you're down here, but other folks are up here. And then I can pinpoint the very specific areas they need to work on. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a game changer for the business. In many cases, my clients, and this is a huge number that if you're listening out there, you really got to do the math on this. They've doubled their conversions which means I come in and no one's looking at this stuff, but you've got some 200 hitters. Right. And all of a sudden you go through training and you build what I call pinnacle Jedis who are doing the right thing <laughs> the right way. And now you've got 400 hitters and you're doing more with less. So your conversions are going up. Those people are happy and coming back, true loyalty, and they're bringing people with them. So it's a smart business model, but it's all based on why people buy. But you have to have a way to measure it. And that has been the golden ticket for my clients because there's no guesswork in it. And mm -hmm. it's the only way. But that one metric, it would be curious. In 2022, if you're listening out there, just look at how many folks are coming in. Because we got a lot of loyal customers out there. But my, and, and, that, and that's great. The same thing you do to build those loyal customers relationship-wise, emotional intelligence-wise, will work with new folks over time, but you have to have a system. You have to have a system of measuring that. Yeah, for sure. Very interesting. Well, Steve, I there are so many different topics I want to delve in with you um, too, but I would love to have you on the podcast again to do that. I know uh, our, our time is kind of sort of running short today, but just to, to wrap up, um, where can people find you if, if they're interested, number one, in working with you or just learning more about the Pinnacle uh, process? Yeah, it's um, thank you so much, Maddie. And uh, yes, I could talk. My, one of my issues here is I could talk all day about this. I got <laughs> a deep seated, profound passion for what I do. So I can get carried away. Yes, for folks sure. can definitely find me at uh, pinnaclepeformancetraining.biz, B I Z. And of course, Steve at pinnaclepeformancetraining.biz will come right to me. And uh, one thing I'll just mention on the way out because um, I have very unique training. I haven't heard this in the industry before. 
I have what I call an exclusivity pledge with all of my clients where I will not work with any of their competitors for the life of our relationship. And most of my clients have been working with me for years and years and years. For instance, next week, when I go back to Virginia Tire, I started with them in 2012. Mm -hmm. I've had some of their competitors try to hire me, but I, I think it gets back to integrity. I will not you know, train your team and then go across the street and train those guys to compete against you. So I'm looking for the you know, multi-location, those companies that want to be that top shop market leader and make them the best. So, you know, reach for out sure. to me. You know, if you know, I'm not working with a competitor, I'm happy to help you. But, you know, thanks so much for taking some time, Maddie. Thanks so much. We appreciate it. You as well. Uh, grateful for you and, uh, and all my clinical clients. Take care. Have a great day.